To begin, determine the drain location and remove subfloor between the joist bay. Then install 2x blocking 3 quarters of an inch below the top of the existing floor joist. Next, lay a bead of adhesive on the blocking. Then install 3 quarter inch OSB on top of the blocking and fasten in place. Mark the OSB subfloor and cut out the trough location. Next, lay a large bead of subfloor adhesive on the OSB and install the subfloor with trough cutout and fasten with nails. Begin by measuring the shower pan area behind the floor cutout. Then dry fit the slope panels. For the last piece, you may need to cut it to size. Simply measure the distance from the wall to the panel, mark that distance on your slope panel, and cut. Next, remove the dry fit panels and using a 1 quarter inch by 3 8 inch square notched trowel, spread a layer of thin set over the shower pan area. When finished, press the panels in place one at a time. Walk on them to press them down. First, lay down the backer board. Then measure and mark the area around the front and sides of the cutout on the bathroom floor. Use the drain body as a guide. X out the area you will be cutting out. Next, put down a layer of thinset using a 1 quarter inch square notch trowel. Then, place the cut backer board down and secure with manufacturer recommended fasteners. First, attach the proved two-band coupling. Next, apply thinset in trough recess. Next, using a 3 16 inch V-notch trowel, spread thinset onto the front edges of the slope panels and top edge of the backer board. Bed the drain body into the thinset, assuring the drain flange sits flush with the top of the PET and cement board. Set the drain body in place and remove the masking tape around the outer edge. Remove any excess adhesive. Next, Adhere transition tape, fleece side up, along both sides and at each end of the drain flange, overlapping the stainless steel one quarter to three eighths of an inch. Mm -hmm. 
First, cut out the appropriate amount of reinforcement fabric for vertical and horizontal wall transitions. Next, apply liquid waterproofing 6 inches out on the floor and 6 inches up the walls. Then, place included non-woven inside corners into the waterproofing while it is still wet. And apply liquid waterproofing on top of the corners. Then, set your pre-cut strip of reinforcement fabric in place and apply liquid waterproofing Cut reinforcement fabric to the size of the seams in the slope panels. Apply liquid waterproofing to the seams. Then, lay the reinforcement fabric down while it is still wet. Then, apply liquid waterproofing on top of the reinforcement fabric. Finish up by applying liquid waterproofing to the rest of the shower bed and up the walls. Apply additional liquid waterproofing as per the manufacturer's requirements. Next, flood test the shower to confirm no leaks. First, measure the distance between the walls and ends of the trough. Then, cut the extensions to the correct length. Repeat on both sides. Turn the extensions over and put a strip of transition tape on the bottom of each. Next, using a 3 16 inch V-notch trowel, place thin set under the extension locations, then set them in place. Determine your shower door location. Our door is 6 inches from the edge of the trough. Apply a bead of sealant just outside of the 6 inch mark and 4 inches up the wall. Then, put down a layer of thin set with appropriate trowel, avoiding the bead of sealant. Install tile on the outside of the shower, ensuring minimum 1% pitch back to the drain. After your tiles have been set in place, cut the liquid waterproofing on the inside of the drain. Be sure to cut clean through the waterproofing. 